The fate of the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, becomes shaky as the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, may have recommended his sacking. And the Deputy Governor of Ondo State refuses to resign his position, even though he has defected to the People's Democratic Party. This is PLOS Politics, and I am Felicity Izewike. Welcome to the program. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, is reported to have recommended to the President, Muhammad Buhari, the sacking of the acting chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Magu. Malami has accused the head of the anti graft agency of offenses bordering on diversion of recovered assets, insubordination, and misconduct. The AGF was also said to have suggested three candidates for consideration as Magu's replacement. However, Magu supporters, uh, the likes of Kanuri Collective Agenda KCA, has tackled the AGF, insisting he is destroying Magu's reputation and they are telling President Muhammad Buhari that Malami's allegation will make a mockery of the administration's anti-corruption war. Is this the case? Joining us uh, to discuss this is legal practitioner Taiwo Akinlami. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. We also have Lanre Suraj, Chairman, Civil Society Network Against Corruption. Both joins us virtually. Thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Suraj. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Kilami, I will start with you. This is not the first time. Since 2015, he has survived various attempts to unseat him. But coming from the AGF himself, the EFCC's uh, supervising agent um, a body, the EFCC boss, Ibrahim Magu, should be sacked. That's what the AGF is saying on allegations of diversion of recovered loot and other sundry issues, as mentioned in the introduction. Will this be the last straw that finally breaks the camel's back? Well, um, I don't think has not found it easy as the HCC its inception. You recall in what it was nominated, it was rejected twice as uh, uh, his nomination has not been confirmed. I think it's the first EFCC chairman that has served for five years, that is active for five years. And uh, what is happening right now is the fact that um, whether he's sacked or not is due to be renominated for another term. And um, now the drama that is going on at the level of the federal government, uh, which leads to the public, shows the level of uh, disorganization at that level, which again does not go well for the interests of the people when it comes to the issue of corruption, the corruption and the rest of it. Now, I don't think what the um, Federal Action General is saying should be, should be swept aside and not be considered. I think it has to be considered. Uh, it's only that you alleges must prove. And I mm -hmm. think that in the internal workings of and there must be processes by which all of these are dealt with. Now, having said that, I need us to understand that at the end of the day, I have not seen some, something unique or different that Magu has done or this government has done in respect of corruption. Corruption is institutionalized. Corruption, when we talk about corruption, we're not talking about individual acts. We're not talking about acts of Magu or, or, or his action or his mission. We are talking about, is there a system in place that can fish him out? Is there a system in place that can ensure that he performs according to the provisions of the law that set up the FCC? Those are fundamental issues. As long as that is not in place, we are going to continue to find things like this that will look, at, that will look like a personality clash. When in actual fact, we are not supposed to be dealing with personality clashes, we are supposed to be dealing with 
statemanship, the responsibility of the Attorney General to supervise ESCC, the responsibility of the Attorney General to query MAGO, the responsibility of the Attorney General to make recommendations to the President. These are fundamental issues. I don't think there are issues to be politicized. If it is true that Mago, there are allegations against MAGO, you as that must prove it should be taken through the process. I don't think it should be a political trial, a, a, a newspaper trial, an online trial. There are processes within government by which all of these are dealt with. So what we have not understood is whether Mago has been subjected to these processes and found one thing before we begin to uh, look at it politically and begin to look at it uh, 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 publicly. All right, let's bring Mr. Suraj in. Um, your thoughts quickly on uh, Mr. Kinlami's uh, position uh, that, um, I mean, we shouldn't politicize this. It's not something um, the, the AGF has the right to uh, take certain decisions because it is the supervising body. Well, let us, let us get it clearly. Let, let us get it very perfectly. Well. And I completely agree with Mr. Kinlami's um, submission. I mean, he will... Assad must also prove, uh, and unfortunately, this is where, because it is all about politics, uh, this is where we also understand the fact that we have a completely disorganized government, you know, a completely disjointed government, uh, and you have people who are placing personal interests over and above the national interest. So you can imagine the implication of the leak of that letter. So let me tell you, that that letter or that statement, I've heard about the nomination of some other replacement for Magu uh, as far back as two or three weeks now. Um, what has happened is obvious that the memo of um, uh, Malami doesn't seem to be enjoying the support of the president. And that was what informed the leak of that letter to the public so that the, we can have start having this public discussion around the issue. So what are the critical issues? So let us even, for us, some of us that are very uh, conversant with the operations, the EFCC and the law setting it up does not in any way So, but let the EFCC to the office of the Attorney General. Uh, the fact is that the Attorney General is not only just an Attorney General, he's a politician. And for being a politician, is also open to the investigation and the prosecution of the EFCC. So he doesn't enjoy any immunity. So if the law should subordinate the EFCC to him, then it is more or less like granting him um, an, uh, an immunity. That is number one. So on the cases where you want to say in subordination, I have, I have observed that the Attorney General Malami, I think it is one of the most horrendous that we've had an Attorney General that has entered Noli on many of the corruption cases in the history of Nigeria. And quite a number, Danju Maguji, Mohamed Diko, quite a number of the cases investigated by EFCC has been politicized where Malami has gone to withdraw those cases, even in the midst of prosecution and after indictment. Is this what is called in subordination or where you want subordination? That is not going to be, that is not going to be possible. On the case of Malabu, the are and rest of them, including former uh, attorney general, the EFCC is prosecuting the case. Malami wrote to the president and said the case should be withdrawn, that there are no enough evidence. On this case, Nigeria has recovered $73 million through the office of the Attorney General from uh, the UK. The private jet of Etete has been seized. Nigeria is asking for $801 million in the UK. is asking for $1.8 billion in Italy. These are cases where the Attorney General said we have no evidence. So you, you basically are happening. saying and, uh, that his uh, work, um, he should retain the position that his work speaks for him? Or is that what my understanding of what you're saying? No, I'm saying that the work of the EFCC speaks for the EFCC. And the person that actually should be removed from office at this point on this allegation and on this letter should be Attorney General and not even the EFCC chairman. It is to the discretion of the president to decide who is going to nominate, and like uh, Mr. Akilami said, either represent Magu or choose to actually appoint someone else. It is within the discretion. But when we want to go to that, we should understand the difference between the personalities. We shouldn't be carried away. Some of these politicians are, you know, are very smart, 
thinking that Nigerians have this collective amnesia, they can bandit this kind of, you know, allegations. And because Nigerian aids to hear about corruption, and then we will go to town and start asking for probity removal and the rest. But we should go beyond that and do a critical review and analysis of the personalities involved and then be able to tell who can we say deserve the applaud, removal, or commendation from the public. What has been the performance of Malami as the Attorney General of Nigeria since he came into office in 2015? What do we have to speak for Malami in the fight against corruption, even in the promotion of the rule of law in Nigeria? And you will know that Malami has performed far below expectation. But if you want to look at the record of the ESCC, like um, Mr. Akilami said, you have, in the letter did not say we have investigated and we have found him wanting or indicted. I mean, Mr. Suraj, let me let me ride off. Uh, Mr. Suraj, let me ride off something you said about you know uh, no law saying um, the time limit for him to act as the EFCC uh, chairman. I'm just paraphrasing what you said. I'm going to take this to uh, Mr. Right. Akin Lamy. Um, I did mention earlier that there has been attempts to unseat um, Magu before now, but a ruling by Justice Ijoma Ujuku in, in Abuja in 2019 over several suits on Magu's status held that there was no time limit agreeing uh, to what you submitted. But the justice did say that the fact that 13 different suits were lodged before the court on the matter was enough pointer to the fact that the issue was of great public importance. So what then do you think in this, um, is this perceived hesitation on the part of the president, who, uh, by all um, um, indication, holds the yam and the knife on this matter? Where does that leave us? Well, um, the fundamental thing is this, which is important that we, call, we pay attention to. The, uh, the disposition of the attorney general to Magu is what I'm interested in addressing. When I submit a, an allegation to the president, it is supposed to have been investigated. It is supposed to have been there. There, there are supposed to have been findings. So if I, I, I've, had, I've, I've looked at the letter written by the attorney general now to the president, it is that there are allegations against the person of um, Ibrahim Mago. So those are the fundamental issues. So you as that must prove, what I'm saying is that there must be processes within the hierarchy of EFCC and the, national, and the federal government on how to deal with all of these issues. Well, I think another way to look at it is that he might not have written the letter to the public, obviously, the letter was into the president. But because of the porousness of the way this administration has operated, the same way the, the speech of the president, I think the second speech, speech done in COVID leaked, word for word, the same way this letter also, that is supposed to be an internal memo in government as leaked to the members of the public. So for me, it shows ineptitude, it shows incompetence. It shows that the government in power is not in charge. Those are fundamental issues. And the welfare and the security of the people shall be the primary of government. So whether Magu is removed or is retained, at the end of the day, how does it serve the interest of the wealth of wood and draws of water, the oil for oil, the wretched of the earth, the people of this country? Because when you say any money. When you say you are only talking about corruption, we must look at the end of corruption. Because corruption is not an end in itself. It's so that the welfare and the security of the people can be taken care of. That is the whole essence of why we are saying state funds should not be siphoned or people should not be encouraged to fit fast on the common wealth of the people. Those are fundamental issues. So it does not matter to me if Magui is there or Shiroma is the one there, or whosoever is there, it doesn't matter to me. At the end of the day, whether Malami is right or is wrong, what matters to me is that 
is the welfare and the security of the people, the problem of government. When we collect a batch of loot, who is accounting to us how the money is being spent? Who is telling us how schools are being built with the money? How the health system is being improved with the money? How trade is being improved with the money? Those are fundamental issues for me. Until we begin to move beyond the politicization of this kind of conversation, I'll begin to link it to the yearning hopes and aspirations of the people. It will be a wasted conversation. What, what, is the, what, would the, the, if, what would the conversation that is moved towards the yearning of the people look like in this matter? Because don't, don't forget that this administration came on the anti-corruption mantra. And the man who is at the helm of affairs trying to you know, push this campaign is you know, engulfed in this continuous uh, tug of war as to his position to actually rule that. So how does that connect with the people? How, does it re how do we yeah. come into the picture? Uh, let me stay with you, point. Mr. Um, Akin Lamy. We'll come to you in a bit, uh, Mr. Suraj. OK, look, if I come to power to secure the common wealth of the people, to recover what has been stolen, and and to to ensure that our resources are not stolen anymore it is not a responsibility that is solely put on the shoulder of the fcc the fcc is one of the institutions by which we fight corruption we should fight corruption in nigeria the issue of the fcc does not rise and fall on the FCC. the, the issue of corruption does not rise and for on the FCC alone. What about the issue of federal character? What about the issue of political appointments? What about the issue of civil service? How is the civil service operating? What about the issue of cost workers? These are fundamental areas. What about the security of life and property? Now, when you talk about corruption, I don't want us to look at it alone from the perspective of the looting of the public coffers. I want us to look at it beyond the fact that any time Resources have been wasted. What about the weight of government? What about the weight of running government in Nigeria? The resources we pump into that. So yes, well, this well, is well, a Mr. Kilami, we definitely and have to start from somewhere. But just, just hold on a bit. Let's bring Mr. Suraj back into the conversation. Before we move on, um, I want to ask you, Mr. Suraj, does it bother you somewhat that the same AGF who, when some lawyers filed a suit challenging a Magu's continued stay, um, after, about, after the 8th Assembly rejected him uh, twice, argued that the suits were incompetent. He told the court that Magu has been performing his duties diligently. He is the same one now asking for him to be removed. What do you think might have changed? Well, one thing that we need to understand is that, uh, it, it, like I said earlier, this is actually a government that is purely just completely disorganized and there's a failure of coordination uh, at the level of the presidency. Uh, that is, you could see what recently happened between the Minister of Power uh, and then the Minister of Finance with respect to the director of the Nigerian Bulk um, Electricity uh, se se Selling Company, or whatever it is, NBET. Uh, and that is actually also playing out here. At the point where you have the Attorney General, um, Defending the suits uh, on against Magu was basically because that was actually against the government. It, it has no other option because the appointment of Magu at that time was a decision of the president. And he also is an appointor of the president. So there was no way he could have gone forward to talk, uh, to go and contradict the decision of the president. That would be the height of the insubordination uh, to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But one of the things that I suspect was that there's a politics, and part of the old politics uh, before now was the fact that it is a common knowledge to anybody that has been monitoring what has been going on there, that there's the political clique and cabal within the presidency that never wanted Magu to be uh, the, the chairman of the ESC. Part of that cabal is, is also the attorney general. Unfortunately, with the unfortunate death of uh, the former chief of staff, uh, there's a whole lot of things changing uh, in, in the presidency and the office of the president. And part of that is also with the appointment of Mark. It is not impossible that there's the suspicion that uh, with the new chief of staff, there might be the submission of Magu's name to the National Assembly again now, uh, because that is one of the things that everybody has queried before now. 
Now, what has been delaying the submission of Magu's name to the new National Assembly since you have the new government since um, 2019? And you would understand that there are two things that is clear. It is obvious that the president seems to uh, be interested in Magu, uh, but the others who are around him are not also flowing along with this. Otherwise, if the president has determined before now to remove Magu, he wouldn't be here up until this moment. And with the whole dynamics and power change within the villa, uh, with respect to the operation of the presidency, there will be new things that will be coming up. And that, for me, is one of what you've seen uh, with the letter of the attorney general. It is the change in power play that will then create an opportunity such that when Magu's name is submitted to the National Assembly, some of these issues that are already now in the public domain will form part of the public debate and even queries that will be raised at the National Assembly. And uh, where I have a challenge, and uh, for me, that some of these uh, so don't much, understand so, so, the so many impact areas of, to, of these allegations for institutions and also for the integrity of the country. Sorry? No, I was just trying to, because we're out of time, but there's so much that has to be said oh, right. about this issue. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really I sorry. Agree. Thank and you I'll, so much uh, for yes. your thoughts so far. No problem. Oh, thank you so much. Um, really, it's um, sort of crazy when you're having a go at it. Mr. Akilami, thank you as well for your thoughts on this segment. Thank you so much. All right. We'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about Ondo State and the defection of the deputy governor, why he is remaining as the deputy governor of the state. We'll be right back.